Hi, I'm Matt Welch for Reason TV. I am in Las Vegas for Freedom Fest, and I am honored to be with Yaron Brook of uh, the Ayn Rand Institute, who is the author of a new book, Free Market Revolution, How Ayn Rand's Ideas Can End Big Government. Thank you very much for joining us. How can they end big government? <laughs> Well, this is an ideological battle. It's fundamentally about ideas. And what we try to show in the book is that it's not the traditional ideas that are going to win this battle. Uh, big government grows no matter you have Democrats, no matter if you have Republicans, even if good Republicans, so-called, right? Even Ronald Reagan couldn't stop the growth of government. What is needed is a fundamental intellectual revolution. And, and Ayn Rand identified and we identified the core ideas that need to be challenged are actually moral, ethical ideas. People don't vote their pocketbook. People vote what they think is right. They want to be good. They want to be good people. So we need, we need a moral revolution in this country, and, and, and that's how we get a free market revolution. Now, are you talking in terms of sort of moral defense of capitalism, or is it moral defense of a smaller government? What are you talking about? It's, it's really a moral defense of individualism. And it, I think the, the challenge we face in the world around us is that the traditional morality that we all grow up with, that we are all taught, that is preached by everybody in the culture, left, right, and center, is a morality that I believe is incompatible with individualism and therefore incompatible with limited government capitalism. It's a morality of you are your brother's keeper. It's a morality of your moral responsibility in life is to others. That is the primary responsibility. Therefore, in a deep sense, your life is not yours to live. Your life is ultimately owned by other people. Your responsibility is towards others, not towards self. We need to demolish that idea. We need to destroy that idea and replace it with Rand's view that your life is yours to live as you see fit, morally yours to live. And it's your moral responsibility. It's your moral responsibility to live your life the best life that it can be. And if we're going to win, if we're going to win the battle for limited government, we have to win the moral argument. And that's where I think we're losing. Some of libertarianism's most potent uh, kind of cultural uh, uh, attackers thinking of people like Kurt Anderson, who just had a piece in the New York Times, or David Brooks, um, they will argue, uh, with at least some merit on the underlying facts, that we have more individualism in this country than ever before. Like individuals have more autonomy over their own lives, thanks to the internet and thanks to a lot of other things. And that's the problem. We're all too individualistic, we're too atomized as a society, and what we need to do is find a way to come together. How do you square your analysis, not just with their critique, which one can disagree with, but also with the ideas that it is true, I think on some level, that we do have more control of our individual lives and, and have a more individualistic ethos perhaps in the way that we govern ourselves. Well, there's a certain element of truth there. So it is true that because we're wealthier, we have more choices. I mean, money does buy choices. Money does, in a sense, buy happiness because it provides with choices. If you think about a subsistence farmer, there's not, not a lot of happiness to pursue there. All you do is work and you, you barely survive. At the same time, we've always also constrained our freedoms dramatically. So those choices are consequences of wealth that came from freedom. What we're doing now is constraining that freedom so that we can not create that wealth so we won't have these choices in the future. Um, and at the same time, there are certain choices we don't have that we used to have. It's very difficult to start a business in the United States today. Certainly a lot more difficult than it was 100 years ago, right? That's a choice that's gone. There are fewer entrepreneurs today than we would have if we had no regulatory environment. Indeed, in my view, we would be so much more wealthier today. The other thing that they ignore is, is the question of what does freedom actually mean? Uh, you know, the question of freedom from what, right? Because you're free. What, what does it mean? In my view, is freedom is freedom from coercion. Government is the biggest violator of our rights today. So while they've kept us free from coercion of our neighbor, they coerce us significantly. And it, that coercion is limiting our choices, limiting our freedom, limiting the amount of wealth and the amount of technology and the amount of good stuff that we can create. And just, it, it has profound psychological impact. So this is not just a materialistic issue. This is an issue of self-esteem. This is an issue of, of uh, uh, of, of, of spiritual values that we do not have. We can't attain that self-esteem because we can't do the things that we have the potential to do because we're restricted by government to do it. And I think the biggest victims here are not the wealthy so, or the middle class so much as the ambitious poor. Poor people who are institutionalized into poverty because of the entitlement state. Poor people who are institutionalized into poverty because of the regulatory state because they cannot 
own, take control over their own lives. They can't go out there and make a living. You know, my favorite example of this is minimum wage. How many poor teenagers are with keeping out of the workforce because of minimum wage? And therefore, they will never build up skills. They will never build up self-esteem, and therefore, they will never be happy. It seems, uh, to, at least to the casual observer, that Ayn Rand's been much has had much more juice since, let's say, September of 2008. Are you optimistic about her growing influence? Uh, do you are there reason to believe that these ideas are taking more of a root uh, than they were previously? So, just to give you a number, since Obama was elected, uh, Atlas Shrugged has sold 1.5 million copies. That is a big, big number. Um, so yes, I think, I think there is really, there are a lot of good signs out there. There's a lot more taking Ayn Rand seriously, uh, both from our opposition and from our friends. Uh, I think that the Tea Party movement is one of the most positive phenomena in modern American history. It is a movement that has come out of uh, this emotion of enough's enough. We've been trampled on enough, stop it. They don't quite know yet what to do about it. They don't quite understand what freedom means and what it requires. They don't have the intellectual ammunition to win, but that's our role. Our job is to bring them that intellectual ammunition. There's no question in my mind that Ayn Rand inspired, to a large extent inspired that movement, and our victory, the free market movement's victory, is going to be when, uh, when we can embrace Ayn Rand's ideas and when enough people out there in the culture embrace those ideas. On that fundamental note, thank you very much, Hiram Brook. Really appreciate it. For Reason TV, I am Matt Welch.